Hello, chicken nightmares. Have you ever found photos of yourself being used online? I don't mean like you go to some local event that has news coverage and the next day you see yourself in the background of a picture in the newspaper or anything like that. I'm talking about like you take a picture of yourself or your friend does, it gets uploaded and then like later down the line it gets repurposed by some complete stranger in a totally unexpected way that blows your mind? Well, so for the past 15 years I've had one really legendary misuse of my photo that I always talk about, but recently an acquaintance of mine just happened to bumble across a different usage on the internet and it it's also pretty damn legendary in my opinion. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. These two separate but equally awesome moments where my photos of my face ended up online in some strange context. So the first goes back way back to the mid 2000s when I was going through a period in my life where people kept telling me that I looked like the 1980s actor Corey Feldman. I got this a whole bunch back then for some reason, and the first time it really accumulated into something awesome was a story that I also referenced in my photographing in Ashland video about going into a bar in Ashland, Wisconsin and having some guy come up to me and like, my friends think you're Corey Feldman, let's go screw with them. And I went over and pretended to be Corey Feldman for a while and had them all like, oh, starstruck. I was like, surprise, just kidding, gotcha. <laughs> but little did I know that at that moment, in like 2005 or 2006, there was a second, even greater accumulation just brewing in the background. <sighs> See, back in January of 2005, I drove like hours away to go to a party at my friend's house and then ended up just spending the night there because that was really convenient. And the next day, like, we're just milling around in the morning after we woke up and I'm like still kind of in bed and I have all these blankets wrapped around me and we're just talking and she pulls out her digicam and snaps a little photo of me. Yeah, harmless, right? You know, being in on this whole Corey Feldman joke thing, she uploaded it to Flickr and just titled the picture Corey Feldman. Funny joke, didn't think much about the photo after that point, it just kind of existed out on the internet. But then, two and a half years later, on July 30th, 2007, she gets a ping for like a Google alert that her Flickr username was found on a website called parentdish.com. And the blog post that her username was found on was titled, The Corys Are Back. I feel old, but happy. Uh oh. So this blog post was just a little like fluff piece about this new TV show coming up soon starring the two 80s Corys, Corey Haim and Corey Feldman. Oh no. The, the blog post ends with this line, photo of my favorite Cory provided by Zosha Blue. Oh no, 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 no. And she did it, she did it. She, she found this picture of Flickr of, of me, of little old me titled Cory Feldman and went and looked at it and went, yep, that's Cory Feldman, my favorite one and yanked it and put it on her blog post. And now suddenly I'm a favorite Cory. I've always wanted to be a favorite Cory. This was like the most amazing thing in my life back when that happened to be utterly confused for an 80s movie star to the point that someone puts a picture of me in a blog post and calls me her favorite Cory and didn't even realize it wasn't Cory Feldman. It was awesome. Okay, okay, so, so for like a decade and a half, this Cory Feldman mix-up was the only major unexpected usage of a picture of me that I was aware of on the internet until the fall of 2021. <laughs> So in the fall of 2021, an acquaintance of mine happened to be uh, just stumbling around looking at internet posts and came across one called 16 Tips and Tricks to a More Attractive Profile Picture, backed by science. So, you know, this article has all the do's and don'ts of having a successful dating profile picture like skip those boring neutrals and accentuate that jawline. Mm, look at me accentuate that jawline. But most importantly, tip number nine is that your profile picture has to send the correct signals. No matter how you're using the photo online, people are judging you on everything that's visible within the frame. All the expected stuff like your clothes, expression, and posture getting noticed. 
But it doesn't stop there. Everything in the background gets scrutinized as well. Your mission is to make sure everything visible in your photo adds up to a positive impression. And to do that, you need to understand how signaling works. Signaling is what your photo communicates between the pixels. And then included after this paragraph is a picture of me when I was 37 from Bumble with my dead cat who died in 2016 laying on my face. What kind of signal could that be sending? Random tips and tricks blog post? Well, let's read on and find out. For instance, if you choose a picture like the one to the left for your online dating profile, what do you think that says about your personality? Certainly not that you're a fun guy to hang out with on a Friday night, dot, dot, dot. Not a fun guy to hang out with on a Friday night? The fuck? I, I'm fake Corey Feldman. How can I not be fun? I got a dead cat on my face. Well, wasn't dead in the picture. This was years before the cat died. Just clear that up. Okay, okay, okay. Before I get too wound up, let's, let's approach this rationally. What is considered fun on a Friday night certainly is subjective to whoever is trying to have fun on a Friday night. And I can only assume that the typical fun on a Friday night within the context of a Tinder Bumble app is the most basic man holding a fish in his profile picture definition of fun on a Friday night. You know what I'm talking about. You get a few matches that week and you only pick the one who's the hottest because she's the hottest. And then you take her out to some club and it's like wall to wall people and there's like a DJ and a band and it's just boom, boom, boom and you can't hear shit. So you can't even talk to your date all night. So you just spend most of your, most of your time going, you want a drink? And they go, I th what? And then you want a drink? What? And then, then you just spend like, you just muscle your way up to the bar and buy like 20 drinks at a time because you know it's gonna be an hour till you can get back up to the bar and then like you just start feeding her drinks all night and then just parading her around in front of your friends so they can look at you and be like, yeah, you, you got, you got a hot one. Yeah, you're cool, you're cool. And then like, maybe you'll see someone who's not in your friend circle you're trying to impress looking at this perfect 1010 of a woman and she, he's like, wow, she looks pretty good. And you can sense that. So you're like, listen here, buddy. You start bumping chest with them and like trying to prove to this woman that you're the alpha man here. You'll beat the shit out of that guy just for looking at you when she's there with you. And then you just get, keep, wrestling to the bar and drinking more and more and suddenly you're like blah, puke in her purse and then you wake up 15 to 20 hours later and that's your fun on a Friday night date. And if that is the definition of fun on a Friday night, then yeah, I am not fun on a Friday night. Like because I'm an adult and if I'm gonna do anything like that date, I'm gonna do it on like a Tuesday because let me think about it. You, you go to the bar, there's no band or DJ probably. So like heaven forbid you can actually talk to the girl you brought on a date and then there's like less people there. So you can just, you know, walk up to the bar and grab a drink whenever you want. You don't have to wait in line for 20 minutes. And then like, if you still can't control how much you're drinking and you know, you get a little bit shit faced and are just hung over the next day, it's on company time. Like why? Why squander a perfectly good Saturday where you don't have to work being all hung over when you can do that on company time and double down on being miserable all at once? Life hack. So you're probably right now sitting out there going like, well, if that's not a fun Friday night for you, Mr. Yelly photo guy, what would you do on a Friday night to have fun with a Tinder date, huh? Well, do you want to see how to have fun on a Friday night Tinder date? Fine. Watch this. Well, hello, you must be my Friday night Tinder date. Yep. Come in. May I take your coat? Sure. I'd like to show you something first. Come oh. this way. This is my beautiful clown painting I found at a thrift store. Stand here for a second. Oh, this will be nice.
Have you eaten yet? No. Well, here's a menu. Feel free to order something. I'll be right back. I made you a photo. You can give this to your mother. Here, take it. Do you like your photo? Yeah. Do you want to play a game? Sure. How about a nice game of probe? And that, my friends, is how I have fun on a Friday night. Swipe right next time you see me. And you too can have a giant picture taken with a Sony Mavica.